title of the uh, presentation is China's New Retail Revolution. Um, how many of you have heard the term New Retail before? Venture capital firm that invests both in the U.S. and in China. In the, uh, about half a trillion. From 2003 to 2018, from 170 to half a trillion. How did that happen? It's unprecedented. We showed top 10, the world's most valuable public company, traded company, anywhere in the world. On the left-hand side, back in 2008, right after the financial crisis, of the top 10 most valuable companies in the world, seven or eight of them are technology companies. And most of them are internet companies. What do they have? They have data. And they know how to analyze data and use that data to recommend new services to consumers. So data has replaced credit and oil as the most valuable commodity in the world. At the same time, you don't see the traditional industry Chinese company on the list anymore. You don't see a bank, you don't see a wireless carrier, you don't see an oil company. Chinese government has shut everything down. That's what we see on New York Times and Wall Street Journal. How can the Chinese government that two internet companies VC back, VC with U.S. dollars backing them to become the most valuable enterprise in the world industries. But China to continue to grow, internet and technology are important adoption for the country. I come from China now. When I first moved to China from Silicon Valley to work as a VC in 2005, none of the Chinese company can make that list. I remember when Jerry. Over 300 million. If you look at e commerce penetration, they are both similar now in terms of uh, value, but China has leaped ahead. In 2005, e commerce as a percentage of total transactions worldwide for China is less than 1%. In the US, we're still one third. Fast forward only 11 years later, China now accounts for 42% of all e-commerce transactions online. I don't have to trust her, I don't have to know her, I, don't, I can haggle with her online for the right transaction price, but I don't have to worry that I won't get the goods. Because Alipay has my money, and I'll make sure it's not released to her account until I have it. And she doesn't worry about who I am, whether I'm going to pay her or not, because the money's already sitting in an escrow account. Alipay got started, and that's how Alipay used that to encourage transactions across cities, across provinces, across the country. Every seller is willing to sell on Alibaba. And then having the Alipay as an escrow service, buyer feel comfortable, consumer feel comfortable to buy the transaction. And therefore, over a period of 10 years, e-commerce hugely took off in China. And then JD and Alibaba started to foster more growth of logistics, transportation, and so forth, to make e-commerce even more relevant in the U.S. And 74 billion as a market size, nothing to sneeze at. But in China, literally in the last four years, mobile payment, especially Alipay, WeChat Pay, has replaced cash. And now that market, mobile payment in China, is over 10x the size of the US market. The amount of innovations happening in China on e commerce, and we'll go into deeper detail on retail, is astounding. When I first went to uh, Tokyo in uh, 2008, I saw this map. It's impressive that there are about 20 lines in that map. And there are about 8 million people that ride that subway every single day. About 37 million people take the high-speed rail to go into Tokyo to work every single day, 10 years later. And you look on the left-hand side, the upper chart with three subway lines was the number of subway lines in Beijing in 2005. The one below is 2015. Now it has about 16 lines. And the number of people who ride subway in Beijing is now 9 million. In one decade, surpassed Tokyo. And the number of people that ride high-speed rail in China at the peak season, when people go home for Chinese New Year, 400 million people. More than the population size of U.S. That happened in literally one decade. We're looking at Pudong, the eastern part of Shanghai. Twenty years later, from the same point, from the same point of the same tower on Bond Center, overlooking at Pudong.
160. Over the last 40 years, he added one New York every year in China. That's the pace of urbanization. Every year, he added New York for about 40 years. That's the pace of urbanization that's happening in China. Have the scale, you have the data. With data, you can do innovation. Just to compare the number of orders per day for the number one food delivery company in the U.S. is publicly traded, that's Grubhub, at a close to half a million orders sales on Singles Day on November 11th. The amount of sales that's done is in a light blue color. So for 2017, in one day, the founder of DD with the founder of co-founder Eric Kemp, the chairman of Uber on the left-hand side, back in spring 2003. Back then, I was the guy who took the photo and organized the meeting. Back then, Uber had burned $2 billion in China. It could have had the same stake for $15 million three years earlier. They had burned $2 billion to gain the same stake only three years later. So a lot of people think that Uber failed in China, right? I don't think so. Because that stake that they've earned two billion dollars for is now worth eight billion dollars today. Only two years ago. Both Chinese startups and US companies. It's up to you how to figure out how to navigate through that, build consensus with the government to find a road that you can both agree on and march forward. We look at the uh, content um, on some of the Chinese uh, websites. There should be a video, I'm not sure. You look at the content on Little Red Book or Xiao Hong Shu company I'm on the board of. You, you can search for Lululemon. You see all the photos that influencers, without being paid, took photos of what they do with Lululemon. When you look at the products there, there's a lot of stuff, a lot less content surfacing on a typical good US e-commerce app. This is a video on mobile payment in China. She doesn't use cash much anymore. This is just so much easier. When you're riding in the subway, it's much easier to shop with your mobile phone. And stuff gets delivered to your house in a matter of hours. Almost anywhere in big cities in China today, you order something online via your mobile phone, stuff's delivered to your house within three hours. Is there a video that we can play? Yeah. This is a bingo box self-automated convenience store. And we, the CEO was supposed to give a talk later on this afternoon at four o'clock, since he, he's not here due to visa issue, I'll do that instead. But it's very impressive that they can, users can use WeChat, which is the most popular social app in China today, to get in, shop, check out, and then get out. Um, zero to now actually the number should be updated to over 300 stores already in the span of less than a year. Amazon Go is still just one store. Number of cities covered <laughs> for Bingo Box is over 30 now. And the tech, this is, for, this is about uh, uh, two months old. Tech back then, colleagues uh, from TGB and our portfolio company in the US have gone to China and we've gone to some of the super, uh, market stores in China. And again, everything you see here, what is a uh, lobster from Australia, you can buy it with a smartphone, and then you don't have to carry it home in the subway. Um, over the last eight years, they grew from $20 million in valuation to now $46 billion, and supposedly from IPO this year in Hong Kong, room at about $100 billion. Their own products and products that are sourced from their portfolio companies. Since each portfolio is run by an entrepreneur, they are very incentivized to make sure they do a great job. Through my presentation.